Welcome to another Haggerty DIY. I'm Kyle Smith, and today we are talking everything you need to know about changing your spark plug. And the tools you need for a job like this are pretty simple. It's a great entry-level DIY, and it's something all the cars are going to need. For me, I get the dedicated spark plug sockets with a simple ratchet, your various gap tools to determine your new spark plug size, a set of plugs for your application, and then a little bit of rubber hose. And if that doesn't make sense, it will here in a little bit. There's a couple reasons that you might want to go through and change the spark plugs on your car. The first is that uh, you might have a misfire or some other reason that you suspect you might have a bad spark plug. The second being that it's tune-up time or a new car that you purchased that you just don't know how old these components are. And the third is that you've hit a service interval. So possibly if you're reading through on a new car or something like that and you hit 60,000 miles, 90,000 miles, 130,000 miles, whatever it may be, it's time for new plugs. And if you want to know exactly how the inside of a spark plug works or what all the components are, go ahead and watch this video that we've linked down in the description about how that all works. And when selecting spark plugs, you'll want to go through and reference your service manual or possibly some high performance guides, depending on what your engine build looks like. And there's a couple reasons that I reference selecting a plug from your service manual. The first is that you can't go off of what is currently in the engine. And that is because you can't trust the previous owner, especially on old cars like this Healy. The second is you wanna reference that service manual to make sure that you also not only get the correct plug, but actually get the correct gap for that. In this case, this is the factory recommendation for this Austin Healey Sprite, the 1275 engine. It's a Champion 9YC. A lot of people like to run NGKs, but it comes down to various opinion on what you wanna use. Be sure to do your research in selecting your plugs. And it's worth noting that right out of the box, is not ready to install. With every spark plug, you wanna make sure that the gap between the electrode and the ground strap is the correct distance to make sure that it will work correctly in your engine. So despite these being brand new plugs, you already need to make adjustments. Let's walk through how to do that. So there's a variety of tools that you can use to gap your spark plugs. And the first and most common is a tool like this one here. And it's a simple coin type and you can see around the edge has varying thicknesses and then a gauge here in the center and it's inch on one side and then it is millimeter on the other which is a little less common to use. And then of course this hole here, some people think it's for a keychain but it's actually to use in opening up the gap of a spark plug that you're adjusting. The second that I have here is one that I keep in my road trip toolbox and that is just a nice aluminum piece probably a little bit overkill and it only has six specific size adjustments, but they happen to be the six that I need for a motorcycle that I own. And then the final option is a set of feeler gauges like this, which are precision thickness pieces of metal. And so you can dial into an exact size that you need. I like having these in the top drawer of my toolbox no matter what. And so it's what I typically end up reaching for when doing spark plug gap, just because I have them the most handy. So there's a couple tips to go with gapping your spark plugs. And so I will show you here on one of the plugs for this Healy engine. And the first is to go ahead and check right out of the box what the gap might be, because you never know, it could be spot on before you go screwing with it. So this one here measures just a little bit over 50 thousandths, which is way too big. I need to be closer to a 30 to 35 thousandths range. So to close this up just a little bit, all I need to do is find a surface that's not going to damage that ground strap. And I'll just close that up and I'm just trying to make small movements. So that only closed it up a little bit. So I'll do it again. Maybe just a little bit more. But the goal here is to continue to close that up without going too far. again. And if you don't have a wood top bench like this, I recommend just using a piece of scrap wood or even just putting a towel or a rag on top of the workbench. That one's still closing up. It takes a little bit more pressure than I want to give it. And that one comes in right at 30,000. So that's on the tight side, but should work perfectly. 
If I wanted to open that up just a little bit, I would use the gap opening portion of this coin tool and slide that just underneath so it catches on the, the ground strap. And then I would press down with just a little bit of pressure on my right thumb. And you can feel it open up just a touch. And we'll see right where we landed. Closer to 40,000, so I went too far. So close it back down just a little bit. And that ought to be right at the 35 thousandths that I want. So the portion of the ground strap that is touching the widest point on that coin type gauge is going to be the part that you read from. So in this case, that happens to be the right edge of the ground strap as you look at it. So it's a pretty easy trick. The real thing to think about is to work in small movements. You don't wanna move the ground strap all the way closed just to open it back up and work it back and forth. You wanna move it as minimally as possible, but you'll get a touch for how much pressure it takes to move it as well as how much leverage it takes. Honestly, if you wanted to, buy an extra spark plug and try it out a few times. Spark plugs are pretty cheap, so you'll know you have it right and you won't be screwing up any that are going into the engine. So now that we've talked you through gapping your spark plug, it's important to mention why you don't wanna to go too large or too small. Either way is bad. If you go too large, you're going to end up with an inconsistent spark or possibly that won't, your ignition system will not be able to jump the gap of that spark plug. And you're gonna end up with what amounts to a misfire or a lost cylinder. If you go too tight and the gap is too close, you're going to end up with a plug that more than likely has weak spark and can possibly get fouled from material in the combustion chamber and the byproducts of combustion. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct range and again, your service manual is gonna be the source for making sure you get that correct the first time. So I'm gonna go through and gap all four of these plugs and then we'll go ahead, get the old plugs pulled out and look at putting these in. So the first thing I'm going to do before I even take anything apart is actually put a little bit of tape on each of the boots for the spark plug wires and label each of the spark plug boots. And the reason for this is pretty simple. You don't want to pull all of these wires off and then have to learn your firing order and reference the distributor in order to put them back to the correct place. So something like this only takes a moment and is gonna save you a little bit of time and you'll know that you have it correct when you go to put it all back together. And before you go just grabbing wires and yanking on them, there is a proper method to actually removing these wires. And the key is to grab as far down on the boot as you can. You don't wanna grab all the way out here just randomly on the wire because that's going to damage the conductor inside and could actually pull the wire out of the boot. So if you grab all the way down and give it just a little bit of a twist as you remove it, that will break free the rubber from that porcelain and make it nice and easy. So the 90 degree boots on this Austin Healy are pretty easy to remove. You have a good grip, but on something like this Pontiac that has straight boots, you actually have to be pretty careful because it's really tempting to grab pretty far out rather than nice and far in. And that twist is gonna be the trick yet again to removing these. And of course, getting them back on is the same way. And especially on late model vehicles, those spark plug pliers are going to come in handy to keep you from damaging any of those boots. And speaking of specialty tools, we've actually arrived at the only one you're going to need for this job, and that is your spark plug socket. And it might look like just a standard socket, but there's actually something special going on inside of these. And that, I'll push one out for you here, is just a little bit of rubber that is closed down inside there. And that's wedged into place. And what that does is help hold the plug in place. You can see it takes just a little bit of force and then that won't fall out. And so these are helpful for a couple reasons. The first is it does hold that plug in place, especially when you're removing things that are down in a weirdly recessed engine. And the second is that it makes sure that that spark plug does not move around in the socket and damage the porcelain or the electrode there at the top. You wanna to make sure to take care of those because damaging them as they go in can be a real headache. So we'll use this to go in, but we will not use this socket to actually install them initially, only to tighten it down. For that, 
we lean on our other specialty tool, which is actually just some rubber hose. Let's take a look at how it works. So our next step is to just go ahead and remove the plugs that we have. And I get the spark plug socket seated in place and then install my ratchet and just give it a little bit of force. Your spark plugs shouldn't be too tight and you don't wanna go crazy on this. Then I'll thread it off by hand, making sure to keep a hold of it because you don't want it to droop and drop um, and damage the threads specifically in the cylinder head. But you can see this one's not the best spark plug. And if you're curious about what a spark plug can tell you, again, reference our everything you need to know about spark plugs video that we'll link down below. This engine is very clean around the plugs, but if you have one that's recessed or has any dirt or debris around your spark plugs, you wanna make sure to remove that before you remove the plugs. Wipe around it with a rag or even a little bit of compressed air will get rid of that debris because otherwise, as you pull the spark plug out, that dirt is gonna fall down into the combustion chamber, which is not where you want dirt to be. You wanna make sure that that stays clean. So we've got all the plugs out of the engine here and you can see our front two cylinders, so number one and number two, have a lot of buildup on them of debris and carbon. And more than likely that's because this front carburetor seems to be tuned awfully rich. So there's extra fuel in these cylinders that these plugs are struggling to burn off especially of those insulators and that porcelain. Our number three plug is actually the best looking of the four. And you can see that it's reaching temperatures hot enough to self clean that porcelain and maintain a good spark. And number four back here is just hot enough to self clean, but I think there's a little bit of oil, especially built up on the edge of this one. And so we might have a little bit, a bad set of piston rings or something like that. But none of this surprises me. I bought this car knowing that the engine was a little tired and might need a rebuild in its future, but it looks like I might be able to limp it on quite a bit longer if I just get that front carburetor tuned in and not running as rich. And this is an important step in the process of changing your own spark plugs is actually taking them out and looking at what you removed, especially relative to a new plug. This can tell you a lot about what's going on inside your engine and what you might need to change moving forward. All right, and I know it's been a while, so we finally arrived at the point where we're going to go ahead and install our spark plugs. And that is where that rubber hose that you didn't think I was going to use comes into play. What you like to do is install the plug into a scrap piece of rubber hose. So fuel line or vacuum line, whatever you might have sitting around the shop, or that is off cuts at your local parts store. And you use that to thread your spark plug into place because if you can see, I've almost got this one cross-threaded, but it won't take the torque to actually cross-thread and damage the threads. So then I can just take that loose, get it lined up properly, and then it threads right in. And I can know I haven't damaged the threads in the cylinder head or the engine block as I do that. So we'll go ahead and get that one spun in. And so that's hand tight now, and I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the remaining three and I'm installing all of these plugs. You can see I don't have any anti-seize on them or anything coating the threads. And that is because most modern spark plugs come pre-coated with an anti-seize on them to help with dissimilar metal and galvanization or corrosion. Some older spark plugs that you might find, either new old stock or even some new ones for particular applications do not have this coating and you can see because they are a, a more dull metal on the threads that you'll want to make sure to use the appropriate anti-seize to keep them from being stuck in the head. What you'll often find though is that any new spark plugs are already coated from the factory and do not require any other uh, anti-seize or sealant on the plugs. And the last step that we've arrived at is to go ahead and tighten your spark plugs down. Now this is going to vary between manufacturers, so you always want to make sure and reference the spark plug manufacturer or your service manual, whichever is lower to keep things from getting damaged. In this case, you can torque them down to a specified number or oftentimes modern spark plugs are going to be essentially torque to yield, which will be finger tight plus a rotation of the ratchet, maybe half or three eighths of a turn. And in this case, we will go ahead and torque these down 
and get our spark plug boots back on and this car should be ready to go. Go ahead and reinstall the boots on our spark plugs and make sure to get a nice good positive click as they go into place. If you feel like it, it would never hurt to put a little bit of dielectric grease on the spark plug boots that will keep them from seizing to your plugs, keep everything healthy for the long term. There we go. We'll take our labels off now that we've got everything in place. Go ahead, close the hood and head out on our way. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe down below. Or if you have any additional tips for changing your spark plugs, leave them as a comment. For now though, we'll see you later.